In the last videos, we covered the occult creation myth, linking it to what many supposed scholars, when we use that term, of course, we do so generally and broadly. It even includes academia, uh, scholars teaching, you know, theology, Christian studies, etc. Um, and rabbis are actually teaching uh, this occult trash instead of the Bible. Uh, this is the last video heading into the actual first day of creation. So uh, starting next, we're going to go right into it, and this will be awesome. Uh, and we'll tell you, this is how we read it when we can read, of course. Uh, a terrible infusion of confusion uh, you will never find in the Bible, this paradigm of scholarship largely. Uh, again, we're not pinpointing every scholar who has ever, ever existed. There's some that are good, but most are not, period. Not teaching the Bible, and that's not good. Then we reviewed the Rabbi Babel as well as Tyndall House. I mean, we've given examples along the way. We still keep getting comments where people, while well, they haven't watched the other videos where they've seen the examples, so they don't know that we have. Well, watch. Uh, if you haven't, go back, watch from the beginning. Uh, but regarding Leviathan, whom they, of course, called a demon. Uh, we're going to deal with that even more at the end of this video. We just have one last slide we're going to throw in on this one, uh, which also uh, adds to that position, which is really cool, actually. Uh, a scripture we found in Job, you'll see. Uh, so basically, you know, they say, though, oh, he was a demon, he was evil, he was even the devil in some cases. These are all completely illiterate ignorance, never in any scripture, anywhere, at any time, period. And the ones they claim are, they, they very clearly can't read. When that was a kind of creation on the fifth day, with tremendous detail in biblical descriptions of a physical animal species and affirmed from multiple Bible witnesses. So this is not something that we need a scholar for. The Bible is our scholar, and it settles it. It's done already. Now, uh, we're going to do this with the darkness. Uh, the only exception for this, uh, for those at the very top who created this infiltration of the church, that's what we're seeing here. And again, guys, that's not new. Uh, Paul warned about that. Uh, Jude weren't warned about that. We know they were already doing this even in the time of the apostles. So it shouldn't be a surprise. We're seeing it 2,000 years later, and it is more grotesque, and it has grown out of control for the church generally, uh, which is very occult. Uh, basically, though, those at the top, they're the ones that are evil, not your pastor, not most scholars who really, they, they, they're just following the paradigm. It's sad that they do. Uh, extremely, and many of them will defend this uh, position. It's not even a position because these guys can't even read the Bible. We've proven very clearly, uh, but they, they treat that position as fact, which is not Bible, thinking they're propagating the Bible. That's really the, I mean, think about that for a second. It's like, wow, that is about as evil as you get for those who are teaching this crap. Uh, we obliterated that already and will continue to throughout the series, but we're using these first videos to really set a foundation. And yes, absolutely, we're coming out with a very strong rebuke because we're disgusted at what we've seen from scholars on this topic. And again, it's exactly as Peter warned, willing ignorance. So when it's exposed, we're definitely going to call it out and we ain't going to be nice about it where you're going to use the same language of Messiah and the prophets. But before we begin the creation account here, we got to deal with this one last thing uh, on this topic, what was before creation, basically, is what we've been doing the last uh, videos, uh, because that's where the manipulation starts. They take uh, the, the creation account, they create a gap that doesn't exist, and then they just shove all kinds of trash into the gap. It is lousy. But that's their mindset. Again, we already proved there is no time period in Scripture known as before creation. It's just not there. It's fiction. Uh, it is occult fiction, in fact, we proved. And all that was there previously that we know of is the Father and the Son. And perhaps the Holy Spirit, we don't know. Scripture doesn't say, never identifies him uh, as having no beginning like it does the Father and the Son, which it does very clearly. 
Now, uh, we're, we have a whole series coming on that. Uh, was Jesus God or was Yahusha Elohim? Uh, and we are going to address that topic in great detail. Again, with an entire series because there's so much scripture that really makes that so clear. But even in the next video, uh, it will be part 11 because part 10 is going to be without form and void. We're going to slip it into that slot even though it's not a new video, though it's fairly new. Um, no scripture identifies the Holy Spirit, though, in that vein. It just doesn't. I mean, do we follow Scripture, or do we do we like to propagate the doctrines of men and beat people up as anti-Trinitarians or whatever stupid word they can come up with? What dumb, you know, illiterate ignorance when the word Trinity doesn't even exist in the Bible, so who cares about it? Uh, when you see the, the, the word, that is, you, you do understand that, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure our viewers do. When you see the word eternal, that does not mean they don't have a beginning. Understand that as, well, our spirits are eternal, right? But most certainly have a beginning. We were created, right? Uh, angels are eternal, but they have a creation point. We're actually going to cover that very clearly on the first day. Uh, it's just not there. Uh, you know, so trying to take, again, a word uh, out of its own definition. I mean, eternal doesn't mean they've lived forever. It means they will live forever. Um, it does not mean they don't have a beginning. So they see that word eternal uh, used in terms of the, the Ruach, and then they assume, oh, well, that means the Holy Spirit is also from, you know, from before uh, creation, right? Well, actually, no, no, it doesn't mean that, and it doesn't say that. Genesis, Jubilees, and Second Esther's all agree. In the beginning is the first day of creation. Period. We've demonstrated that. There's no in, nothing in Scripture uh, prior to that, uh, except again Elohim created, and no mention of exactly what they did before. Nor do we need to know, or that would be there, of course. However. Let's address the final thing here that comes creeping into the church in so many circles that really fits the same genre. It's really the same thing, the uh, insertion of the occult. What was the darkness before creation? Was it evil? Hmm. Now, we already saw that is the occult creation myth, right? I mean, that's the exact language even. They're using it. They're literally speaking like occultists. Uh, representing that lie. But does the Bible somehow agree with the occult on this? I mean, that, that is possible. Yeah, I guess it is. But no, it doesn't. Let's see. Was it created? Uh, was evil created? Was, was that darkness before created? Where was that darkness, by the way? Uh, on the face of the deep. Hmm. What does that even mean? Ah. We're going to explore that. Or are some scientists right, right? Was it the newly made up dark matter, right? Well, since it doesn't actually exist, that's a fraud fiction, uh, it would be rather hard to claim that an educated guess. <laughs> but we're going to touch on that uh, later in the series as we are going to go into science some. Uh, because science is trying to dip into religion because that portion of science, I'm not talking about applied sciences, sciences where they're inventing things that are useful to mankind. That's all great, and the science is obviously good because it proves to be. I'm talking about the science of the creation period and the origin of man, the origin of species. That's what I'm talking about. That is a complete paradigm of absolute utter fraud uh, in the scientific community. We should not embrace any of it, not a sentence of it. Understand that. None of it. Because it is, number one, the occult. It leads to the occult. Uh, they're, they're proving occult myths, basically, is what they're doing. Yet, they actually haven't proven anything. They're guessing in a vacuum. They have no evidence. They have no equipment by which they could date the earth to... Uh, 4.3 billion years. I mean, none of these things are even possible. It's impossible. They can't do it. They can't say it. So for them to say it and treat it as fact, I mean, you couldn't be more of a fraud than to do so. Anybody that says the earth is 4.3 billion years old and they treat it as fact, well, they just lied to you because they don't know that as a fact. It's a guess and it's a horrible guess at that. We're going we're gonna to get to that. Don't worry. Now, first though, 
a little test to start off here uh, that we can all go and conduct ourselves, mostly. Have you ever gone into the deep ocean over the great deep or abyss? Anyone? I mean, on a cruise ship, uh, on, a, on a boat of any kind, uh, even from an airplane, though that's not really the right perspective. I mean, we have a sun now, which was, well, not there at creation, right? No light, not yet, not at the beginning of creation, not in Genesis 1-2. Just water and darkness when you looked at its face. Oh, wait, the face of the deep is where the darkness was. Not everywhere. Deep what? Waters. Now, yet you can still get an extremely clear picture here because we have this thing called the world ocean. And there's only one, not seven. They can name them whatever they want, but they're all connected, so there's one ocean. But look down from your ship or boat, and what do you see? When you see water, and we all know, we can see through especially shallow water, right? You can see even through the deep a little uh, during the daylight, right? But no, wait a minute. You simply cannot see very far, though, into the deep ocean, right? We all know this. This isn't a shocker for anyone. Now, forget again about the sun, because it didn't exist, or even the moon. There was no light at creation yet. No stars even. So go out there in the middle of the night, with no moon, okay, uh, on your ship or someone else's, right? And look down. Oh, don't forget, turn off all the lights of the ship as well, because, well, they weren't there either. You'll still have some light, uh, especially from the stars, which, well, we're, we're giving you here, uh, regardless, no problem. Uh, even what you see on screen uh, has a little light in there so we can see what's going on. Understand there was no light whatsoever. So it would be far darker than what we're even seeing. But even with that light, you can duplicate this experiment and see what Genesis sees. This isn't hard. Look down into the waters. Look at the face of the deep. You don't even have to go to the great deep, just any deep, really, uh, in the middle of the night. Uh, and that's what this passage says. What do you observe when you try to focus into the ocean deep? Well, darkness, of course. Uh, we know some are afraid of the dark. I, I understand that. Uh, we get it. But do we really think Yahuwah is, is now or ever was? Hmm. Is it really then a mystery that at creation there was darkness on the face of the deep? That's where the darkness was especially before light was even created. The absence of light. Very simple. You ever sit in a dark room? Now, turn the light on. Oh, what happened to the darkness? Where did it go? Now, turn it back off, and what's left in the absence of light? Well, darkness. This is Something that we can all experiment for ourselves very easily, even in our homes. Oh, wait, did many miss that this is what Genesis says? Not everywhere even, but the darkness was on the face of the deep. We're going to cover that. In other words, just like our test here, you look into the waters, into the face of the deep, the great deep. Uh, that's what it is. Uh, only it was even deeper at creation than what we call the great deep today. Uh, and that would mean even darker. And you see what? Darkness and nothing else. Literally nothingness. Matching the other words in that passage in Genesis 1-2, uh, without form and void, Second Esther calls it darkness and silence. The Qumran scrolls call that darkness obscurity. Hmm. None of these are evil, see? Uh, certainly no puzzle there and no way to insert something that cannot exist when all Yahuwah created was very good. Remember, there was nothing in the deep at creation, so nothing to be afraid of. Nothing's listed there. No scary monsters even. Nope, they're not there yet. That's the occult, and that's a lie. No demons existed yet because demons don't exist until the fifth generation from Adam. They are not even a creation. Understand that. No evil. 
just not there. It's just not there. And I know some will go to a scripture, I create evil. Yeah, we're going to cover that too. Don't you worry. Um, that is not going back and redefining creation. That's nonsense. There were no predators, nothing void, without form, obscurity, silence. How is it that scholars can't seem to understand these words? They're pretty easy to get. We already showed you this is the narrative from the occult propagated by you know, rabbis, modern Pharisees uh, especially. That's how it really slips into the church through leaven, unquestioned and untested by the very scholars whose job is to do so. And that's why you will see us rebuking them often. And no, we ain't stopping. The real question is, are you? Because scripturally, we are all supposed to be doing so when we find it. Genesis 131 is really a wrap-up of the six days of creation. This is on the sixth day, it says. Uh, and here's how it ends. And Elohim saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Oops. There's no evil there. Nothing he created is evil period. That doesn't mean that people don't become evil. Yes, people choose to become evil. Cain did, but it didn't mean that he was not human because of it. That's nonsense. Never found it in any scripture. Watch our serpent seed videos. There are two uh, there, as well as the mystery of Cain. There are two of those as well. Thus the heavens... And, and it says, in the evening and morning were the sixth day. Thus the heavens and the earth were finished. Well, wait, but, but isn't there still some creation left? The, in Genesis 2, doesn't creation continue? No, not in any scripture, anywhere. They are misreading Genesis 2. Everything in Genesis 2 is already created in Genesis 1, and we're going to show you detail by detail by detail. That is not another creation account. It has never been, and those saying so, those scholars, are illiterate. They cannot even read very obviously. They certainly don't know scripture. But what does it say? and all the host of them. Ah, wow. Every single one. Some try to say, uh, I remember uh, Lou, Louis Gigolo, G Giglio, how, however you say his name, I don't know, um, who traveled with uh, Chris Tomlin years ago, did a tour with him. Uh, I think actually he's, he's the writer of uh, I think it's How Great Is Our God, and one of those songs uh, that, that Tomlin sings. Uh, of course, Tomlin made it a hit because he is he's incredible uh, talent-wise, no doubt about that. But here's the funny thing. He would say, you know, a new star is born every, what, 20 minutes or something like that. I don't know if I have that right exactly uh, by science, and whether that's changed since, who knows, who cares? You, you can't even keep up with it because, you know, 20 minutes becomes... 18, which becomes 14, which becomes 11, which becomes 9. Uh, next thing you know, there's 20 every minute. I mean, it, it's all made up. It's all fiction because no one's ever seen a star actually born, period. No one ever has. Science admits that, and we're going to get to that, okay? They tell you they've never seen a star born, period. No one ever has. But he went around trying to take occult science and insert it into the Bible. That's what he was doing. So he was saying that, you know, Yahuwah is creating. See, he's still creating. After all this time, he still creates every 20 minutes. No, he doesn't. The guy doesn't know scripture. He doesn't represent it. This is the problem. Now, there you are, a very well-known scholar. Very well-known, very famous. And yet, he doesn't even know how to read the creation account because all the hosts of heaven were done. Right? That includes the sun, moon, and stars Stars were done at creation after six days complete. No new star is born. Doesn't happen. And on the seventh day, Elohim ended his work, which he had made. So he's, that's it. He didn't just rest that day, which he certainly did do. It's Sabbath. But he ended. Notice, no, notice the word. He ended his work. Why? Well, because it was finished says Genesis 2.1, uh, and it was already very 
good, and everything had already been made. I mean, this is the language that's here. I don't know how scholars can't seem to read, but, well, we see it all the time. So, uh, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had made. Okay, and of course that is the Sabbath. Genesis 2, 3, and Elohim blessed the seventh day and sanctified it. That's the Sabbath. And yes, uh, <laughs> that, that the word here rested is the word Shabbat, Sabbath in Hebrew. Yet there are scholars that actually say, oh, see, Sabbath isn't even in the creation account. The word isn't even mentioned because you're too stupid to look into the Hebrew and, and see that the word rested is Sabbath. That's pretty bad, Shabbat. Because that in it he had rested from all his work, which Elohim created and made. Creation is done at this point, folks. And then it wraps it up with the final wrap-up here, which all of these verses are, really. These are the generations of the heavens. That's all of heaven. All the generations come from there. All right, again, new angels aren't created, period. So all the angels that will ever be were created then, period. And of the earth when they were created. Now, that's all of man. That's all of uh, animals. You say, wait a minute, though. I was just born, you know, uh, 50 years ago, right? Well, yeah, that's nice. You were born, but you were created on the sixth day. Oh, wait a minute. How is that possible? Well, you were created in the loins of Adam and Eve, who, by the way, was also created the sixth day. She was formed the second week, but she was created. Male and female were created the sixth day, period. That's not some other character. It's only Eve. She's first woman, period. Adam's first man, period. No other way to read that, and we can't read in between lines that the gaps aren't even there. So, uh, basically, we are then conceived and we are born and then we're given a spirit in the womb okay and that spirit was created when we're going to deal with that in the next videos we actually know the day of creation when man's spirit was created as well as some of the animals the ones that have spirits oh some do you'll see now so, uh, and of the earth, when they were created, in the day that Yahuwah Elohim made the heaven, or the earth and the heaven. See, the Bible does not ever deal with creation as a second creation, as a recreation. Again, we showed you the verses, even in Revelation. Revelation is saying that the heaven that's there in the end times, which hasn't happened yet, is still the first heaven, and it's still the first earth. There was not a earth or heaven before them period. Those saying so just don't know scripture, and they're not Bible scholars, so let's stop following them, but test everything they say. Again, we covered the book of Jubilees, 2-1. Uh, the angel of the presence spake to Moses according to the word of Yahuwah, so Yahuwah is involved, the angel of the presence is involved, helping Moses here, but what do they say? Write the complete history of the creation. What is the complete history? How in six days the complete history of the creation is six days, period. Literal days, we're going to discuss that as well. Yahuwah Elohim finished, completed, he's done, all his works and all that he created and kept Sabbath on the seventh day, hallowed it for all ages. You do live in all ages, correct? I think you do. So maybe we need to start taking these things seriously. And appointed it as a sign for all of its works. The Sabbath is the sign of the creation. No wonder we lost it. We lost the Sabbath. How about that? How does church lose a bedrock principle of all of Scripture that actually is a bedrock in the New Testament, we prove. Read Rest, the case for Sabbath. Uh, free an ebook, restsabbath.org, or watch our Sabbath series, and man, you will never be the same. And remember, we covered before that wasn't just the angel of the presence telling Moses. Yahuwah told Moses uh, to write down basically the division of the days in the law. Uh, so write the law there, Moses, and in the testimony. 
uh, that is the creation, that's the testimony, and the time before uh, Moses existed, before he lived, uh, and the angel of the presence actually wrote that originally on the heavenly tablets. Uh, and in the weeks of the Jubilees unto eternity, yes, Jubilees is also prophetic all the way to the end times. Uh, he said, Yahuwah said to the angel of the presence, write for Moses. So Moses said, help. There you go. He didn't have to write it all by himself, but he did have 40 days and nights by which to copy basically the first parts of Genesis. He didn't write all of Genesis then because it continues. Um, but uh, still, nevertheless, or all of Torah, sorry, I, I said Genesis. Uh, Torah is, you know, largely uh, events that occur uh, after the Exodus, during and after the Exodus. So uh, he says, write for Moses from the beginning of creation. So the beginning of creation, the beginning of time, the beginning of the world is the first day, period. Uh, Till my sanctuary has been built among them for all eternity. That's not the one in Israel. That was very temporary. His sanctuary uh, comes down in New Jerusalem, and it's New Jerusalem that carries on through all of eternity because Yahuwah and Yahusha will come down to earth. They will live here with us. Heaven will come down to earth, and it will be in heaven, yes, but on earth because earth will be heaven at that point. The two will be one. The firmament will be laid, rolled back as a scroll, and there you go. Now, this word uh, darkness uh, in Hebrew, hosek, is not evil necessarily. It's evil when it's used with other words, but not by itself, uh, essentially, especially not in the creation account. And here's an example in Deuteronomy 5.23. Uh, in the midst of the darkness, for the mountain did burn with fire. Uh, okay, uh, that is the presence of Yahuwah. Uh, is that evil? Can there even be any evil there? Are you kidding? Uh, any scholar that doesn't know that, and it seems they don't uh, in, in many of these cases that hold this kind of view, well, they, they are not Bible scholars. They don't represent it. So sure, evil can be dark. There's no doubt about that. But see, here's the problem. Darkness is most certainly not evil as a word. That's not what it is. I mean, to say night is evil, that's against Scripture. Uh, because Yahuwah called night what? Well, we just saw. Very good. Everything that he created at creation, Jubilees actually calls the darkness, and defining it as night, uh, that darkness is good. Very good. Can't get over that. Uh, that's one of the creations. So night is not evil. Uh, I know the darkness before creation, however, uh, is simply the absence of light, especially because of where it is even, on the face of the great deep, right? And below you see what? Well, you see nothing because it's so deep and dark. Really not that difficult. On Mount Sinai, the darkness, of course, was not evil. It was the very presence of Yahuwah. So again, anyone claiming that every time you see this word darkness, you insert evil is evil. <laughs> no, but not necessarily. But it, the scholars that say it absolutely 100%, they don't know scripture and they're manipulating the word. That's not what it means. Um, that's not a scholar. This is the same word in Hebrew as that of creation. Uh, it's translated as the words darkness, uh, dark, obscurity, hmm, or night, the 80 times it is used. Uh, it is not a code word for evil. It's just not. Uh, though, again, evil can be dark. There's no doubt about that. But dark is not always evil. It's a broader term, and uh, it, it just doesn't work. Uh, whenever they do that, it shows an ineptitude that uh, exists in scholarship, which is extremely poor, uh, especially when it leads to the occult, which they're inserting a specific darkness here, the darkness in a chasm between order and chaos, in which that darkness houses chaos, usually a demigod, Nephilim or God, whatever you want to call it uh, to them, uh, that's a fallen angel uh, in reality, or whatever. Why would we ever assume the occult on a general word that is, well, not evil, but good, and very good at creation, so there's nothing to discuss here, uh, especially? 
There are more, but you get the picture. So the notion that you take the word darkness, dun, 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 and the music plays the organ, and you know, and all of a sudden you're supposed to assume evil is ridiculous. That is not Bible. Uh, it never has been. Sometimes, yes. Always, absolutely, indisputably not. It just doesn't work, folks. Let's go right to the verses in question here. And what do we see? Well, Genesis 1.1 uh, is separated as a creation account, supposedly. You know, that which the Bible offers in massive detail, uh, creation, uh, yet we're supposed to believe the supposed first creation? Nobody knows anything. Even Yahuwah doesn't know anything about it because he doesn't say anything about it. This whole creation, this whole existence before this other creation, the second creation, and, and just nonsense absolute nonsense. Yahuwah would provide such detail if it were true. It cannot be true, period. Uh, it's never a concept in the account. It's never a concept in scripture. There's never a war in heaven. There's never darkness, uh, which is evil at creation. And there is never, ever anyone before creation except Elohim. That's it. So you just can't pull anything else out of the passage because it's not there. They're adding to it. It's called leaven. We're supposed to separate that out, though, in what is very clearly, well, never written in chapters and verses, uh, but a continual story uh, here in this Genesis account in Genesis 1 to uh, Genesis 2, in fact. And But wait, wait a minute. That's odd. Genesis 1 begins the creation narrative as the beginning of the first day of creation. We've already proven. So you can't even say that. You can't separate verse 1 and verse 2 out, period. You can't. Creation is already underway. Done. Verse 2 begins with what word? And, oops, well, that makes it a continuation, does it not? Of course, that's English. Um, but uh, it's, it's there in the Masoretic text too. So it's not a new concept here. Uh, it is not a new day. Uh, it is still the first day, and it will be wrapped up as the first day soon, a few verses later. It's all there. It's right there. It's always been there. That's all the first day from Genesis 1-1, okay, th until it says the first day right there. Certainly not a new pod of time with millions and billions of years inserted in what? Not Bible, not a Bible paradigm. These are really trying to make room to inject new strange science like the evolution theory uh, in its entirety, of course. Uh, yes, evolution does occur, adaptation, that is, uh, and that is observable. None other of that is observable. It hasn't been observed in the fossil record ever. Fraud has been committed to try to make it work. It is terrible. Uh, even Darwin disproved his own theory when he told you the fossil record, the actual evidence, does not support the evolution in the sense that he was suggesting. So his theory was not a theory because he tested it himself and already proved it wrong. There you go. Why publish a book? Well, because it's a nice handy-dandy theory for communists and the world elite who want you to believe that survival of the fittest is the doctrine of man. No, it's not. And it certainly isn't the doctrine of the Bible. Uh, that would place the Nephilim above man, and duh, everybody should know that. The Big Bang, right? And all the other unscientific, unproven theories, uh, which never will be proven because they're junk. Uh, and the Bible is not. See, that's the problem. The Bible has withstood the test of time. Uh, the Big Bang Theory can't even survive uh, centuries. The, the uh, and Darwin's theory already failed before he published it, but even now, a hundred and, I don't know, 50 years uh, or so later, uh, still hasn't been proven, no proof. Uh, they still call it a theory, uh, and yes, science does that because they can't prove it beyond the theory. It's just a guess, and it's a really bad one. No, thank you. So, wait, but verse 3 begins with what? And, oops. Verse 4 starts with, and. Verse 5 starts with, 
And, <laughs> wait a minute, this is just one big continuation. Exactly. Which is how the Bible is written largely. Again, there were no chapters and verses in the beginning. Uh, they're wonderful things because we can find uh, passages much more easily that way. No doubt about that. But we can't look at the Bible in a view of, oh, wait, that's chapter 2. Chapter 1 and chapter 2 are different. Uh, no, they weren't written different. That's not the way it's seen. Oh, verse 1 and verse 2 are completely different pods of time. Uh, not the way the Bible was written. That's nonsense. In fact, all verses in Genesis 1 and the beginning of Genesis 2 begin with and. <laughs> They're one complete account. Oh, yes, complete. It's the complete history of creation here, right? And it goes into Genesis 2 a little, uh, but then it tells you, we read those verses in the beginning, it tells you at the beginning of Genesis 2, it wraps up creation. Creation is wrapped up. Creation is done. There you go. That's what it says. Now, uh, that cannot be disconnected. And extra time then added. See, this is that's called leaven. We all know this. That's leaven. Leaven uh, is, is expanding gas bubbles, essentially, right? So what does it do to bread? Well, it expands it, right? You can watch it rise in the oven. That's leaven. That's Pharisee leaven, and that's what's being applied to the creation account here. So all the verses in Genesis 1 and the beginning of Genesis 2 uh, begin with and, uh, and that you, you, there's just no way to read that any other way, trying to say, yeah, but I know it says and, but, but it's not really and. It, it means it, there's, there's a period of time in between. <laughs> nonsense. It's just nonsense. There's no logic behind that. Uh, just leaven. That's all. All right, one last thing. Speaking of the occult, let's follow up briefly on our last two videos about Leviathan. Something else we uncovered in our research is the scripture uh, in Job 26, 13 about the creation of Leviathan by the hands of Yahuwah. Second Esther says that. It says he's the first creature to be formed by the hands of Yahuwah. Wow. Uh, Job is in our Bibles, right? Yep, that's right. It's still there. Nobody took it out yet. So what the prophet Ezra wrote was Scripture and is affirmed by Scripture as the entire book really vets inspired. Of course, someone else uh, even came into comments accusing Ezra of making up two titles of Elohim, uh, both together uh, used hundreds of times, before Ezra even lived, <laughs> uh, right there in Scripture, hundreds of times uh, prior, and the person was just illiterate. They were trying to attack Second Esther's, of course, yet they lied in order to do so. That's what we get all the time, exactly the ignorance we see from so-called challengers. Really, every day they come in. You don't see many of them because we catch many before they even uh, get to. They can't even read, and they really have no challenge, and we're not going to leave that stuff in our stream because it's just absolute nonsense. It was a complete lie from the start. So we're not going to leave that there, uh, even though we obliterated it and made it clear to them that they can't read very clearly. Uh, they've never challenged anything. They just agitate really and ridicule. That's what it is. But Job brings up this crooked serpent. What? What's a crooked serpent? Well, it's not a crooked serpent. That's not really uh, crooked, is really not that word there, but that's okay, uh, who was formed by the hand of Yahuwah at creation. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Crooked serpent created by the hand of Yahuwah. The angels were not created by the hands of Yahuwah. Understand that. So this isn't an angel. The word serpent is nakash, and it can be angel, yes, but this is not. This is the crooked sea monster this is not really crooked either, but this is the sea monster. Okay, this is Leviathan. How do we know that? Well, again, it's not a mystery. Uh, Isaiah even says so directly and twice, even using this title uh, in 27.1. Uh, the crooked serpent, the piercing serpent is who? Leviathan, both times. Hello, here it is. Uh, how is it that scholars don't know that, and yet Bible dictionaries get involved in this in the dumbest rants? I, I just, I don't understand how these guys keep their jobs, because they should be fired over something as grossly negligent as this. This is a perfect example of how scholars purposely inject the occult into Scripture, and we have two examples of it right here on screen. 
Here in Strong's Concordance, uh, they try to insert that this crooked serpent is a constellation. That is utter illiterate ignorance of the dumbest proportion. I mean, what a stupid thing to try to inject astrology, a rebuked, Fallen angel doctrine of the Watcher Fallen Angels, in fact, which was first found after the flood, carved on a stone. Uh, today we call them the Sumerian tablets. Yes, they are Nephilim documents, uh, not anything that preceded the Bible. You've got to be kidding me. And outright rebuked by first Enoch. Noah's grandson knew it was evil because he hid that rock carving, uh, those stone tablets. He hid them from Noah because he knew Noah would be angry with him. Why would, I, why would the righteous Noah be angry? Because they're evil. Astrology is evil in Scripture throughout. Now, that is in Jubilees. k &M is his name. And uh, it actually, uh, he's wiped out of the genealogy of modern Genesis as they changed modern Genesis. Uh, they wanted to cover this up uh, as well, as censoring Jubilees and First Enoch. Uh, however, it's in Luke. Oops, what? Yeah, Luke. <laughs> tells us about k and uh, Luke is in your Bible, right? Yeah, yeah, I, I do think it is. It's in the Septuagint Genesis, and it's in the uh, Samaritan Pentateuch uh, of Genesis as well, uh, and it's in Jubilees. So again, Jubilees is affirmed by credible sources, uh, including the book of Luke. There you go. But here is uh, this basically occult trash in a Bible concordance. It's disgusting. Astrology. Uh, even worse, though, is there's a deeper lexicon, and that's uh, on the right uh, at the bottom of the screen. Brown Driver Briggs, we highlighted, has to, well, they just have to insert uh, this, suggesting of this crooked serpent uh, being of Assyrian Babylonian origin. What are they doing? They're inserting Tiamat, the occult, the goddess of chaos, into the creation account in the dumbest scholarship imaginable. This is not Bible scholarship, and that is horrible. How can these scholars even read to realize the crooked serpent, or how can they read, uh, to realize the crooked serpent in exact language is Leviathan twice in Isaiah? Duh. Uh, then we see Leviathan again, the sea serpent, who is an actual animal species, uh, and this time used to punish uh, the nobles of Babylon and the Chaldeans. How about that? And that's in Isaiah 43, uh, 14. So then we see Leviathan again basically there. So it's uh, very obvious what's happening there, that their ships are being attacked by Leviathan. So this is so obvious, yeah, these scholars clearly have an agenda to lean into the occult on things, but they can't even read. I mean, there, Leviathan is used for Yahuwah's purposes, just like he was when he swallowed Job. Ooh, yeah, we're pretty sure that was Leviathan too, not a whale. In fact, we know it wasn't a whale because scientifically that, my friends, is impossible. Now, we all must be careful and leery of their so-called interpretations in all denominations, really, because they are everywhere in Christendom. We have been infiltrated. They infiltrate, and they've had 2,000 years to do so, but uh, even to assume that the modern church is his church is really something of great question. Uh, but they are scoffers pursuing their own lust, said 2 Peter 3, operating in willing ignorance, says 2 Peter 3, uh, which is what it takes uh, to miss this, really. Uh, it's called gross negligence in any other profession, and anywhere else, well, it gets you fired and sued even. Uh, which is what many of these slugs deserve, called scholars, uh, within that community, which is, well, most of them, because they follow trash like this without bothering to actually do their job and research. The real question is, why on earth are there so-called Bible scholars who actually think it is okay and an acceptable practice to insert the occult here in this one word twice in two different narratives? both redefining Leviathan as some demon or similar, or at least evil. Why would they even think that would lead to Babylon, Assyria, only in the occult? That's the mindset. The fact that they even think like this, I mean, their head even goes there, demonstrates they are poorly versed in Scripture, and far more so 
in the occult, as they prove to be. That is the problem with scholarship today. Our modern paradigm of those teaching us the Bible is a defiled, manipulated paradigm, and translators uh, committed gross negligence to not even bother to look up the word crooked serpent, uh, words crooked serpent in Job, to see that is the exact reference to Leviathan twice in Isaiah. Hello? They translated both. This is not a mere mistake that then becomes worse and exacerbated by another mistake on top of another mistake. Oh, no, 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 no. This is the planting of a seed of the occult, which is then seized on and expanded exactly how Pharisee leaven operates. And that's why we rebuke this, my friends, and you should too. If that does not stir up righteous anger in anyone watching this video, well, you may want to check your pulse. Uh, and more so, your relationship with Yahusha. We're tired of this trash being overlooked by an impotent church who says, oh, but you need to show love, brother. If you don't have rebuke, you don't have love. Because if you're not rebuking the scholars that are leading the lambs to slaughter and allowing them to do so, you don't love the scholars and you don't love those lambs that are being killed as a result. So, I know pastors will defend this stuff, uh, these occult blowhards that exist throughout scholarship, intertwined here and there. It's not all of them, but it's most, uh, not even realizing how foolish they even sound. They don't know, all right? They're programmed into a paradigm. They all are, but we can all see past this, and we believe that most of our viewers do. Here's a good stopping point, and the next video is already pretty much ready and will follow soon uh, with incredible revelation. This, this next one, I, I, it is a must watch. If you haven't even watched any of the other videos, uh, make sure you watch this next one. This is going to blow you away. So what we know for certain is everything Elohim created is very good. There you go. Creation was finished at the end of the sixth day. That's established in Scripture. Really not questionable. Really not. And, uh, okay, so what is a day? Is it a literal day? Or can day be stretched into something else? Oh, we're going to get there too. We'll affirm that more on, especially the days of creation, which we're about to enter. Now, we know that good is, well, not evil, right? And evil is not evil. Good. Sounds simplistic, but why is it scholars seem confused? And they're certainly trying to confuse us, it appears. I know in this age, they are being confused by, you know, basically evil being characterized as good and good as evil. I get that, but that doesn't change the fact that they're antonyms and never the same. The creation narrative from Genesis 1-1, really, into Genesis 2 is one great big narrative one cannot separate and we will talk again more about why these cannot be anything but literal days soon when every verse except two of chapter one and the beginning of chapter two begin with and one would think scholars could not mess that up as one great big narrative yet they do in too many cases. The darkness before creation, or really at creation, as in the next video especially, will demonstrate Genesis 1-1 and 1-2 are the first day of creation. It already began. It was already underway. What? But it was without form and void. Exactly. Wait till you see that there is exact language in Genesis 1-2 that nails that creation already started. And it cannot be before creation when it is already underway. So verse 2 has specific creations that are ignored in most of scholarship because they're not reviewing the ancient text, which is just plain willing ignorance and nothing else. And many ask questions. Well, where did the waters come from, right? Oh, the answer coming. But that really should have been very easy to answer all along. 
Where did the darkness come from? Where did the abyss or deep come from? Hmm. Well, all will be explained next. Get ready. We have over 470 videos on this channel, one for every day of the year plus now. Uh, many just as profound with some 50 or so in Tagalog for Filipinos and now six in Spanish to start. We also have been setting up subtitles for 20 plus languages for most of our videos. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell for notifications of new uploads. Join our email list as YouTube fails to notify often. And we will notify you ourselves at thegodculture.com. Just fill in the pop-up there. We now have alternative platforms for videos on Rumble, Odyssey, and Utreon. And our new podcast is available for all of our videos pretty much as well. All links in the description box and friend us on Facebook at The God Culture space hyphen space original. That is our only Facebook page, only one that we're checking and using. Uh, if you prefer an alternative, we now have Parlor and Gab, links below. We have six books published internationally, being read in over 100 countries. Uh, and actually, I correct that, it's now seven. How about that? Uh, with our new release, the first book of Bible History Illustrated, Enoch's Animal Dream Visions. We also have now launched Ophir Philippines Coffee Table Book in the U.S., Canada, U.K., and many overseas markets on Amazon, and it's available in hardcover or softcover there. Also, this uh, first book of Bible History Illustrated is available only in color. We're not even doing this in black and white. Only in color, and you can get it in color, uh, softcover, or hardcover on Amazon. Uh, coming to the Philippines soon. Not yet. We're not there yet, but we will get there. Additionally, we launched the Book of Jubilees, the Torah calendar, with color maps and interiors, as so many had requested that overseas, uh, rightfully so. Uh, we already have that in the Philippines. Uh, the Philippine copies have color maps inside already. Uh, that, too, is available on Amazon in hardcover, softcover, both in color or in black and white soft cover, if you wish. Uh, all books, including Solomon's Treasure, are now free in ebook. Uh, we're not going to do an ebook for this one because we have this video series animated, and we're going to release one with all five uh, as one video as well. So, no need to do an ebook when we'll have the video animation. Uh, more coming soon. Thank you for watching. Now, always remember, prove all things for yourself. Yah bless to everyone.